Welcome to Naresh Technologies, uh, I am Bangar Raju and uh, this video I wanted to demonstrate about how to use abstract classes and abstract methods in our applications. Um, in the previous video I was just giving an idea about uh, abstract classes and abstract methods and this video will be the continuation for that how to use these abstract classes and abstract methods in our applications. Let us try to understand about it. See. What is an abstract class? An abstract class um, is just going to be a class which contains abstract method and an abstract method is what which does not have a method without any method body. If you have not watched it, just watch the first the video of abstract classes and abstract methods. Fine. So, what is an abstract method? A method without any method body is known as abstract method and what is an abstract class? A class which contains any abstract members in it is known as abstract class. So, in the last video how to define an abstract class, how to define abstract methods, how to implement them all the things we learnt. But this video I will just tell you how exactly we can use this in our application development. In my inheritance videos, in my inheritance videos, uh, the third part 3 video of the inheritance, I given an idea like how do we use this inheritance in our applications, how do we use um, application development is all about uh, dealing with entities. And every entity, every entity is going to have a set of attributes and we are just going to identify the common attributes and put them in a hierarchical order. So, exactly the same thing we will try to understand right now. What is it? Uh, I want to develop an application. In my application, uh, I have some few entities. What are the entities? A rectangle, a circle, a triangle cone like this I am just going to have some few entities available here ok fine. Now, what we require to do now identify the attributes for each and every entity now. So, representing each entity I want to define one class now a class representing rectangle, a class representing circle, a class representing triangle and a class representing cone. So, what you are going to do now let us just go for identifying the attributes of each entity rectangle uh, what a rectangle has the width and a height next circle what are the attribute for a circle circle requires radius and every circle requires a representation for pi next triangle triangle base and height the base and height is nothing but the width and height and a cone uh, what a cone require? A cone require a radius, a cone requires height and also a pi. So, like this I am just going to have attributes for each and every entity. So, in the next level what I require to do is identify the common attributes now. Identify the common attributes. Why to identify? Because while defining rectangle, circle, triangle, cone, if at all you start declaring all these attributes in this code duplication comes into picture. And mainly object oriented programming is all about reusability that is what. So, if you just want to be more clear about it watch the part 3 video of inheritance in that I was get demonstrating about it like uh, identification of the common attributes and doing it. So, here also exactly identify the common attributes first without redefining each and everything because width is repeated, height is repeated. So, because they are going to be repeated under multiple entities the better thing is identify all the common attributes first. So, actually width is common, height is common, radius is a common attribute contained in uh, multiple things and uh, again pi because today we started with only 4 figures, but in the future we can have more figures. We can have more figures here what is that a, an octagon, a polygon, an arc a quadrilateral, a hexagon, so many, so many figures can come into picture. Today we have only 4 figures, but in the future n number of figures can come. 
and these can be a common attributes in different figures. So, I identified all the common attributes. So, what is the first thing you require to do is first define one class, first define one class with all these common attributes. First define a class with all the common attributes. Come on, let us do it. I am just going to create a new project, a console application, abstract implementation. Now, in this, uh, by default, it gets the class called program. Either rename it as figure or otherwise rename this particular class first. So, I am renaming this class as figure. So, I'll rename this as figure. So, why I am defining this particular figure? I want this figure to be the parent class for all the four classes. I want the figure class to be a parent class for all the four classes containing the common attributes now. Come on, let us do it. Public class figure and in this class, I wanted to define all the common things now. Public, a double, width, height, radius and also a public, constant, float, pi equals to 3.14f. So, this is my class now. So, now if I make this class as a parent class for the rest of the four classes, if I make this class as a parent class for the rest of the four classes, I do not require to declare these things in that declare these attributes in those classes. Okay? Suppose, I have a class here public class rectangle colon figure. When I just inherit immediately the class rectangle will contain all the attributes now because we are using a hierarchy same way a public class circle colon figure will contain all the attributes again. So, like this we can have all the attributes now. So, this is reusability. So, the rectangle can use the attributes from the figure, circle can use the required attributes from the figure, it can use. So, this all reusability, we are just bringing reusability into picture, same way one more class representing a cone and one more class representing a triangle, okay, we can do it, fine. Now, um, first what I am doing is in the rectangle class, I am defining one constructor, public rectangle and here just simply going to take double width and double height, double width and double height and inside of it, I am just simply writing it, this dot width, this dot width in the sense, I am referring to the width inherited from the parent class is equals to width and at the same time, this dot height is equals to the height. Okay? So, these two we are assigning to these two. So, whenever we are going to create the rectangle class instance, now we are going to pass, we are going to pass the two attribute values based on which the rectangle class instance gets created. Same way, let us go with a circle public. Circle has only one attribute. Second one is pi, pi is a constant value, we never require to pass directly double radius, double radius and in this place we can just say this dot radius is equals to radius. Same way tomorrow if you are implementing a cone class here, public class cone, colon, figure, uh, public cone. What are the attributes of a cone? First one is radius, double radius. Next double height, this dot radius equals to radius and this dot height equals to height. So, every class, every class requires a set of attributes, same way you can define a triangle now. Okay, every class requires these attributes. So, without declaring them under every class, what did we do? We declared it in a parent class and once you declare them in a parent class, they can be consumed under all the child classes. And now, what I want to do is, now I wanted to, I wanted to find out this one. What is it? The area of each figure. I want the area of rectangle, I want the area of circle, I want the area of cone. For every figure, I want the area right now. 
if you want to get the area of each and every of these things now, how do you get the area? Okay. So, I want to get the area of all the three figures. Even though you want to get the area of all the th three figures, means you want it common in all the three, we cannot define the method in the figure class. See, generally what comes to parent class, what is common in all this will be defined in the parent class. Now, I want a method that returns the area of the appropriate figure. Can I define this in the figure class? No. The reason? Because the formula to calculate the area varies from figure to figure. Because it is going to vary from figure to figure, we cannot define that method in the parent class and consume it under all the child classes, not possible. Okay? So, this is a place where exactly abstract methods comes into picture. The method cannot be defined in the parent and consumed, but that method can be declared in the parent. How? Public, abstract, double, get area public abstract double get area. I am going to declare the method as abstract and once you declare an abstract method, remember your class automatically becomes a abstract class. Your class automatically becomes a abstract class. So, public abstract class figure, you are going to have a method called get area. Now, this get area method, this get area method must be implemented by all the child classes. Why it should be implemented? Why it should be implemented? Because that the rule of abstract class is that only if a parent class contains any abstract method in it, those abstract methods must be implemented under the child class. Mandatory optional, it is mandatory. So, now I am restricting all my three classes, all my three classes, fourth class we did not define. If we define that class also, all the classes or all the child classes to implement this get area method. Okay. So, you may have a doubt here, Are why to declare it here, directly we can go to child classes, yeah we can do it, but by declaring here there is an advantage. What is the advantage? The method name will be same in all three classes. The method name will be same in all the three classes and the method signature will be same in all the three classes. Without that, say suppose you can write in child classes, you will have a doubt, can't we write the method directly in the child classes without declaring in the parent? We can do that that is also possible. But suppose tomorrow if these three classes rectangle, circle, cone are being implemented by three different people and when they are implemented by three different people now, there will not be a guarantee. What guarantee? All the people will write the name of the method and signature of the method in the same. So, person one is rect writing rectangle is giving a different name for the method another one is giving different name, third one is giving different name and their signatures also, one is written double, one is just trying to return a decimal. So, like this, this type of changes can be present, but the advantage of declaring the method here is the signature of the method will not vary in all the three classes. If it is going to be same in all the classes, what is the advantage for me? The advantage for us is in the future, when you are going to learn about this particular classes, okay? If you know rectangle contains a method called get area, if you learnt rectangle contains a method called get area, the method will be present in circle, cone, triangle, in every figure class you can find it now. So, if you learn about the signature of the method one time, as it is you can utilize it in the rest of all the classes. No need to learn every time about each and every method. That is the advantage what you will be getting in this context. So, declare it first. This is a declaration and now go to implementation under the child classes. So, first let us go for implementation in the rectangle class now. How do you find the area of a rectangle? Public. See, how to find? First, you the, the method should be implemented here. Public. In the place of abstract, what do you write now? Overwrite. The method is get area. The method is get area. In this, let us write the logic now. What is it? Return width into height, return width into height. Now, come to circle, public, double, public, override, get area, return pi into radius into radius. So, just done for the this one also. So, and here we implemented the area for calculating for the rectangle 
we implemented the logic for calculating the area of rectangle and here we implemented the logic for calculating the area of circle and in the same way you are required to implement the logic for cone also public overwrite get area and here you just require to write the logic that is written written pi into radius into radius plus math dot square root of square root of height into height plus radius into radius. So, there is a formula to calculate the area for a cone and we implemented the logic. So, now if you just remember in all these particular classes we just have a get area method implementation, but here we implemented the logic for rectangle, here we implemented the logic for circle and here we implemented the logic for a cone. So, everywhere and same way you try defining a triangle class inheriting from figure and define a constructor with attributes of the triangle and also define the get area method to calculate the area of it. So, this is the process how we are just going to define the abstract classes and abstract methods and implement them. Finally, see here let us add a new class here, class test figures, test figures. In this test figures, I am going to write a main method and in this let us go for creating the instance of each and every class. First rectangle, rectangle r equals to new rectangle, new rectangle, pass the width and pass the height, same way circle c is equals to new circle and just simply pass the radius, radius of the circle and same way cone c is equals to new cone and pass the values for this first a radius value and afterwards height value. So, just passing and once after doing this and once after doing this remember once after doing this you can just start calling the methods now console dot right line area of rectangle plus r dot get area. Next area of circle c dot get area and area of cone oh sorry both the uh, same names we used here. So, simply here correct c n c n dot get area console dot red line run your code all the three calculated. So, why do we use this abstract methods? Abstract methods are defined in the parent class to restrict the child classes to implement a particular method. So, all the child classes has to give the implementation for the method. See, when can we define a method in the parent and consume in the child? When the logic is the same for all, but when the logic varies from class to class in the child in such scenarios, we cannot define the method in the parent. You simply declare it in the parent as abstract and make the child classes to implement the methods. So, even though tomorrow if someone is going to write a triangle class in the future inheriting from figure, there also will have a get area method. In every class what you are going to come as a child classes to figure in all the places the get area method will be present for sure. That is the advantage what you have in case of the abstract classes and abstract methods like this. We make the child classes to implement a method with a particular signature and name. Logic can be anything, but names and signatures will be same in all the classes. Okay? Thank you for watching the video. For more videos, please subscribe to your YouTube channel Naresh IT.